Hi guys, welcome everyone. Um, just want to welcome you to join us for some worship tonight here at the Presence Church on this fine Wednesday evening in Surface Paradise. Uh, be blessed and thanks for joining us. See a victory, I'm going to see the victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord oh, 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 oh. Mm. Oh, oh. Take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good yeah. As you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good As you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Turn it for good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Oh, you turn it for good. Turn it for good, turn it for good. Cause I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see the victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see the victory, I'm gonna see the victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see the victory. I'm going to see the victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm going to see the victory I'm going to see the victory For the battle belongs to you, Father, we just thank you for your presence here where we are this evening and in our homes. Lord, we just bless you. We honor you. We thank you for what we're about to hear this evening, Lord Jesus. I ask that it would minister to our hearts, Holy Spirit, and that your goodness and your mercy and your kindness will just shine through into our lives in a greater way. Thank you, Lord. Good evening, everyone. Well, we want to welcome you to our midweek interview. Tonight, we are interviewing Justin's mum, Jewel Stephanie, and we are interviewing her because it was Mother's Day on the weekend, and we know that for some people, it's an awesome time, but for others, it's not always a great time because tough seasons are happening or children aren't in contact with their parents. It can be tough times for parents and children. So we wanted to just shine a light on um, tough seasons and how to conquer in those tough seasons as is the theme of May. So I want to introduce you to Justin's mum. This is Jewel Stephanie. And hello. hello. <laughs> and we're just going to get right into it and ask her some questions about, you know, Justin's been very open with his drug abuse history. And it's nothing that you wouldn't have heard before if you've been a part of this church or watch any of our online messages. He's very open with his testimony of how his parents really helped him get through that time. So we just want to pick Jules' brain and find out what really happened during that season. So firstly, I just want to ask, what do you think were some of the triggers that led Justin down that drug path? Okay. As most of you will probably know, Justin is a very adventurous person. And when I think back over his childhood, he always was a high achiever physically. I remember he was the fastest swimmer in his school when he was about 10, 11 years old. 
he, if he was playing soccer, he was out there playing the best he could play. Um, he did a little bit of baseball, but not too much, and it was always to get the best hit, the best of everything. So he had that personality where he thrived on high energy and really achieving in the sporting field, not so much in the classroom. And I remember being quite horrified one day when he said, um, he said, oh, I was always at the principal's office and I'm a school teacher. So I said, you what? He said, oh yeah, she, the teacher would send me down there quite a lot because I'd been talking or something like that. So putting that together with the fact that um, during his, uh, right when he was starting junior high in America, we'd been living in New Zealand for about five years for his primary school, and then when we went to America, he w went into junior high, and um, as we're all aware, there's a lot of peer group pressure as kids start to get into high school, and I think combining that with his fun-loving adventure nature, he, um, he got into a few disputes or there was one fight where we had to go to the school. So that was sort of a bit of a telltale sign. And then we spent three years in America and then came back to New Zealand. And when it came to settling back into high school, he was on a road to make friends, to be popular. And unfortunately, he got into the wrong crowd. And I guess I should combine that. I'm being completely honest. We were working very hard. We'd had 10 years in full-time ministry, which we just absolutely loved. But John and I both were working jobs once we came back to New Zealand from the States. And so he was, they weren't left alone or anything like that, but he knew we were very busy people. We had the mortgage payment starting. And so we were, we were busy getting on with life and doing what we felt we needed to do. So from that part, I used to ask myself, did I get into full-time work too soon? And yet those kids knew we loved them to death and there was a good family balance there. He was the middle child, so I always say Justin was my fighter pilot. If you've studied birth order, uh, as the second son, his older brother was quite just calm and self-assured, but Justin was always out there to prove that he could do it. Justin always mentions that you travelled around a lot and he had to start afresh at a new school quite a few times and that he was trying to adapt to the new situations. And, um, yeah, so do you think that had yeah, much to do Yeah, there were a couple of unfortunate things that happened to him that probably were the biggest triggers, um, especially in his mind. We came back from America and the kids quickly adapted their accents from American back to New Zealand. But they had like the, the latest Nikes and at that stage in life, those big puffer jackets were really popular. And both of those two things on separate incidences, he had taken off him. So once he was at the ice skating rink and they took his jacket and he said, these big kids just bore down on him outside he was waiting for our pickup and then he was at a bus stop one day and the same thing happened again so um, it crushes me to think of that being a mum that kids would be that awful but I think he felt I've got to toughen up. Yeah he said before that uh, he didn't want to have to go through that experience again where he couldn't look after himself so he wanted to yeah. you know get in with a crowd that might protect him. Yeah. So yeah, friends are very important. Absolutely. My next question is, what would have been, obviously the whole season would have been tough having a child in a drug addiction, but what was the toughest part for you as a family or you personally? Mm. There were probably several points where we, um, we were praying through this whole season and getting him into church camps and, and, and youth group and that sort of thing. But when he left school we finally we'd taken him from a public high school into a Christian high school but he found the kids that were in a similar state to him in the private Christian school so John went down one day and said I'm not having any more phone calls to my office you're leaving school so he went to work straight away he's always been a hard worker whatever job he got into and turned his hand to he did well and the hardest point of all 
was when he got to, it may have even been about 21, he would, had gone from marijuana to heavy drugs and we started to pick that up. And he was about to skip the country and go to Sydney and I have a brother who was in the police and he said, if you let him get on that plane, we'd found out through his friends he was getting on a plane to Sydney, he said, you'll probably bring him back in a box because the drug scene in Sydney was so bad. So the hardest thing was having him arrested at the airport and um, one of the prayers I always prayed was, God, please keep him out of prison. Maybe it was my pride, but I said, please keep him out. But, you know, he's done a few overnight lockups, but um, God was faithful and it was very hard to do that. But it was the beginning. So can I just clarify for everyone? Justin thought he was sneaking away, sneaking overseas, told his friends to tell his parents after he had left. But his parents stepped in and sent the police to the airport to arrest their son, Mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing. He'd done a couple of really bad, dodgy things. And so we had grounds to do that. And so we were looking at the long-term view that we wanted to keep him alive. And so it was a God moment. I was an associate principal in a school and John arrived in my office and said, we are heading right now to the police station to have our son arrested. And, you know, you could have blown me over with a feather. And so, um, yeah, that was the way it went. But thank the Lord, we turned the corner. And a lot of you will know the story of what happened when finally we did have him um, released through Youth Justice to come and live on the Gold Coast. And still praying lots because there were still drugs on the scene, you know, readily available. But that's where God really intercepted. Yeah, so Justin got sent to Australia, sent to the Gold Coast, and you had secretly packed in his suitcase a folder for transformations, which is a rehab that Justin went through. And you had put it in with contact numbers and everything, and he didn't know it was in his suitcase. And he arrived in Australia, I believe his cousin AJ um, looked after him and invited him to church. So he went to church one night, became a Christian, unknowing that he was actually at the church and that was a part of the rehab that was attached to it. So he got involved with transformations through salvation at the church and then opened his suitcase as he entered rehab and found the document and the numbers in his suitcase. So it was definitely a God intervention that um, how that all unfolded. Yeah. So can I ask you as well, obviously mums and dads see things differently and I was just wondering if you could be open with us at how that whole situation affected your marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm married to John who is American and I'd gone to the States with a discipleship program, Agape Force, which is a lot like YWAM and um, I thought I was the quiet Kiwi that would never marry the American but um, I was attracted to John, fell in love and married the American. So we were in this full-time ministry for quite a few years and we had a strong marriage. We had a good, we do have a good marriage. This year we're coming up 45 years and I know that was a real blessing and I know that kept us in good stead and um, we have a real mutual respect for each other as well as the love that tides us through. But because of that, John was never afraid of me going back into teaching and into management roles, and he would listen to me, and I would listen to him because I am a godly wife. <laughs> I'd listen to what he would say. And so we had a really a really good understanding of everything, and sometimes John would see my mother's side come out strongly and say, darling, don't worry, it's going to be all right. But if I saw something happening with the drugs and Justin's patterns of behaviour, I would beyond John, you're the father here, you know, what are we going to do? So there were points of real tension. And when you've got two other kids who are performing fine at school and going through life, you want to keep the balance for all three. And so we, we did have times where we probably had harsh words to one another, but we always prayed 
together and believe the best. I think John might have got to a few times, probably like I did, where how much longer can this go on? What is really happening here? But through that strength that we had in, in each other, we were able to ride out the tough times. And you mentioned the other kids. Can, do you know if it affected the other children in any way? Yeah, they might say it had an effect, but they are both strong people. Um, Vince, our oldest son, who's now in the police, he had that real oldest child, we'll be all right, we'll get through this, and yet I'm sure there were times where he thought Justin's getting all the attention again in a not a positive way. And then Vanessa, being the youngest, and the princess, the, the girl arrived at number three, and so her and I ha always had a great relationship, but once again, I know there would have been times it rubbed off. Um, when we were in the early days, and he, he was mainly probably just doing marijuana at high school, um, I went to Tough Love, which is um, run basically through the police, and I was shocked. I guess I had a pretty ch church uh, sheltered type background, although I was in teaching, and um, I was meeting people that were going through this, and they would, we'd talk about how are the siblings coping, because that was really just a uh, support group to help parents who needed affirmation and strategies to get through situations like this. So we tried to, even through things like that, always make sure the other two kids were okay. Did you have many sleepless nights during these oh, years? Oh, totally. I had a, I, I've, I've had hundreds of sleepless nights. And I was always of the opinion that God's woken me up. i got to pray. And, of course, Friday, Saturday and Sunday were the worst times probably. And um, the crazy thing is, because I was really in spiritual warfare for my son, Every time John went, John was in management and he went to China several times and probably the States one or two times. Um, every time John was out of town and even out of the country, we had some of the worst blow ups and a car accident. And Justin, I think he was taken away from a party by the police one time. So I used to know that I was in a spiritual battle and that I just had to hold on to God. And God always brought us through, but every time I would pray, and I know John was praying, special protection when he was out of town. Yeah. Did you ever feel like you were losing faith? I'm sure there were times where I felt how much longer and where I felt if I'd let the kids or John down and tried to be too kind to Justin and to give him another chance and things like that. But I can't say I ever lost faith. I, I have such determination and grit when it comes to my kids, like all mothers do. And I knew that I would hold on to God and I would pray scripture I would really seek God and ask for his protection. I, sometimes I'm sure I was afraid, but I never lost hope. Can you tell us about some of the things that encouraged you or kept you going during that time? Mm -hmm. um, we were always in a good church, so we had support in that direction. Um, my parents were pastors and they were getting to retirement age, but uh, they, in the early days, did quite a bit of childcare for us and supported us that way. And family always, my extended family played a big part. And I always knew God would come through and I didn't quite know how. Um, my grandmother, who is part Maori, was part Maori, she's passed on of course. She, her, her and my grandfather were missionaries to the Maori people. And she had real spiritual attacks. And she was at one stage put in a coma and the whole church just gathered around her in a coma and prayed the devil out of her life. So I saw the power of God and I lived with them when I first started teaching. And so I always knew the power in prayer. So, um, yeah, God always s saw us through. There was one book that I held on to and that was A Woman's Guide to Spiritual Warfare. And I prayed that. I prayed it many times many times and I'd read chapters over and over and scriptures like no weapon formed against me will prosper and so all these 
attacks that the devil was putting in there through drugs and through the attacks on Justin's life. I just held on to the word of God and that book. It, I was in spiritual warfare. I had to hold on to God. Definitely. And you've mentioned to me a few times that you had a friend, Val, that um, really prayed for Justin and almost saw like a vision over his life. Can you share about how that encouraged you? Yeah, Val was one of our friends, Val and Neil, they live in Auckland and she has uh, a good family and they'd gone through university and things like that. And we'd often take walks and go to the beach walking and she and Neil were one day on the beach and said, Jewel, I've had a vision of Justin preaching to a crowd of people. And she said, I want to share it with you just so you can hold on to that because I believe God has got his hand on that boy and one day we're, we're going to see him preach. And she's excited now um, when, when she hears or I send her uh, podcasts of Justin preaching. So God was faithful through that season. Yeah, it's definitely encouraging when you've got someone walking in the total opposite to yeah. have that encouragement from God to keep you going. So yeah. it's very valuable for friends like Val and family to be praying with people and encouraging them and, and asking God for those visions and encouragements that can really get people through those tough seasons. So I just want to ask, do you have any advice for parents that may be going through this at the moment? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, as you've heard from my story, never give up. Never give up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And if it's doing that through prayer, just keep praying. And yes, it will be warfare prayer. Just always let know that God is with you and he's going to hold you up and bear you through this. And the same for any young people listening. God can see you through. Turn your life over to God. And he, it doesn't matter how many times you fail. Justin has preached from the pulpit here that he fell over a few times while he was in transformations, left the program, came back, left the program, came back. Twelve times. He yeah. took him five years to do a one-year um, transformations course. Yeah. So you might think you're stubborn or you've just got that adventure streak like Justin had, but hold on and come back. Don't feel that you've failed so much you can't fail. And the same with parents. You are not a failure. You are blessed of God and God's got good things ahead for you. Can I just read a little quote that I, um, I picked up and I thought that was my journey. This is from Christine Kane. You are strong, you are amazing, you are courageous, you are brave. Words matter, you are not alone. Through moments of heartbreak and pain, God is love and he wants to share that love with you. And then for the children, the adult children, don't believe the lies you've been told. You can break the curse. Jesus wants to give you a life bigger, better, peace-filled and strong in your daily walk. We're all a work in progress. God sees our potential. When we walk towards him, he is always our provision. So that was our journey. Never give up. How long do you think uh, Justin went through that season for? Um, it started to show itself through friends and activities he was doing in high school, early high school. And really, was he around 25 when he graduated from transformation? So um, there, were, there were times where he'd be okay for a while, but often, you know, it's the, it's the sullen, can I say, look that you know he's not doing well. But I, I think, you know, they'd read the Bible with us, we'd prayed with them, and I believe as a child... All the children gave their lives to the Lord. So it was a matter of us just holding on to those promises. Train up a child in the way he will go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So it was about a decade of, you know, turmoil and struggle yes. and faith and prayer. And, yes. And to their credit now, you would never think they had a decade of fractured relationship. You know, no. I never hear any stories from John and Jewel that are about distrust or you did this to us, you took all this money from us, you know, it's never about that. And 
for those that don't know, John and Jewel moved over from New Zealand to help support Justin in ministry, which is such a big sacrifice. And it's just a real testament to them that they, you know, he put them through a lot, but now it's all water under the bridge and it's all close relationship. And I mm. think most of the stories I have heard haven't been from you guys because it's almost like it didn't happen. Yeah, it's hard to forgive, but I think we have to walk in forgiveness. And that's where it's probably harder for Vince and Vanessa to see what God is doing, although they are very proud of what God is doing. But I think I've shared with you, Chrissy, I feel that you and Justin have a destiny over your lives. And so we just pray that as we're here with you and with Vanessa and Francis too, that God will always bless your pathways. In hindsight, can you give any tips for young mums as they're raising their families on what to look like or how to avoid kids going down this path? I think it's always important to put your children first. Now, I say that and I've already told you that I went back into full-time work, but keep praying with your kids, keep reading them Bible stories, um, keep an active role. If you don't have grandparents around, uh, adopt some from your church. Just ask them straight up. I need some grandparents to read books with my children. And um, have established guidelines where you can have good times with your kids. I know some of the things we talk about in, in our family is holidays that we went on. And one of the things I think COVID has done for us has slowed us all down a bit and made us do the things. It's just wonderful to see parents out bike riding with their children and taking their kids to the beach and those kinds of things. So I know some of our happiest memories looking back, yes, we did the overseas travel because John's family was in the States and we had some amazing holidays and visits to Disneyland and that sort of thing. But the most important thing is what goes on in your home and even having an annual holiday, whether it's camping, you know, sometimes it's even dads and the boys and mums might go to her sisters and take the kids to auntie's house. Those sort of things are very meaningful. So I think making memories are, is really an important thing. And the closer you can be with your kids like that, then they are going to bring their friends into your home and it's going to be a win-win for, for you as parents as well as for the children. And, you know, playing games together. I know we're living in a different era, so now it's mainly games on the computer. But even seeing uh, Justin with the children, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see dad having time to interact with the kids. So I know if you read books on, on bringing your children up for the Lord and, and just bringing your children up, it's important to have mum and dad reading to your children and spending time playing games and having fun. And the, the more solid you are as a family unit, I think you're setting your children up for success in every area of their lives. I'm a good school teacher, so you've got to have that reading. <laughs> so you've mentioned the scripture about um, raising your child in the way they should go, and when they're older, they won't depart from it. Mm -hmm. And Justin's mentioned the story about um, just coming over for dinner one night with a partner at the time, and you guys must have been saying grace or talking about God. And on their way home, she said, you don't believe in that rubbish, do you? But he said, um, I... I mean, if God revealed himself to me, I would give him the rest of my life. So even that little just being stable and still mm. saying grace and still um, just using God in your conversations, even when they're wayward, even when they're with someone maybe they're not meant to be with, it still was vital in the turnaround because it still gave him that foundation to say, I do believe in God, but God needs to reveal himself to me. Mm. One of the things that I also um, think about is that I think you have to be really careful who their friends are. And great, have as many friends as you like on the sporting field, 
but don't let sport encroach so much that it cuts out youth group and even it cuts out Sunday. Because um, yes, they're going to succeed and yes, they might be asked to play sport on Sunday and that, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but make sure there's a balance between playing sport, going to the swimming pool, all those things, and being in God's house, being in youth group, and spending time with the right kinds of friends. So um, often, like you're saying, Chrissy, they can be really influenced by who their friends are. And I have got family and friends that said, it doesn't matter as much that whether they're in Christian school or secular high school, you still have to know their friends. And yes, it, it's I totally recommend Christian schools, but you have to be there as a parent. You can't expect the school to do it all. And one thing that I was always quite strong with, and uh, I still am as a grandma, I suppose, is get your kids into the Bible and scripture memorization. And I know Children's Church here is good with that, but uh, my parents used to sit down with my sister and I when we were really little and memorizing the books of the Bible, knowing key scriptures in the Bible. And yes, we've got iPhones and yes, we've got iPads now, but the more that we can put into our kids from the Bible and from scripture, the stronger that foundation will be for them. I guess I was also quite fortunate that we had a quite close-knit family on my side because we lived in New Zealand more than America. When we were in America, Grandma Jane was a great support, John's mum, and so she had similar um, church and values as we did. But I mentioned earlier that my brother was in the police and he had a family and doing things with family, going over for family dinners, those sort of things can really add a lot too. So keeping as much of that input really consolidates young people and sets them up for success. I like how you said you were, you were a school principal, John was in a great profession in management and you just wouldn't think that godly Christian people have to kind of go through this and it's interesting because when I saw Justin going through transformations 12 times, it was almost like he got this stigma of um, being someone that had been through transformations 12 times. And I remember when I met Justin's mum, I, I mean, I used to tell people, don't go near Justin. I would say that to people, <laughs> don't go near Justin. Little did I know I would end up marrying him, but... It was interesting to see when I actually met Justin's parents that they were actually normal, godly people. You know, it just goes to show that, you know, no family is necessarily exempt from a trial like this. And I just want to see if you can, you know, encourage people how to, um, you know, not feel, yeah, like they've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. I think too, um, we can put labels on our children's behaviour, and like I mentioned at the very beginning, Justin didn't take to book learning. And it's something, whoever we are, whatever our station or career in life, you have to at some point, whether you're doing an apprenticeship or a university course, you have to apply yourself to the books. And so, although Justin could have been thought of as a rebel at heart, he just had that part of him I mean, pretty much he could build a house, do the plumbing, dig the drains. He knows so many aspects of life. And in some ways he's like his dad because he's able to use his hands to turn things to what he wants. So he had challenges in facing settling down and being a good student or even when he was in transformations. Um, I know the frustration would bubble up inside of him and he would just explode and so then was asked to leave the program. And that happened a lot, but it was aggravated because of the lifestyle he'd been in for so many years. So as much as we pray, I think part of that prayer has to be, God, settle their spirits, settle the, the soulish part of them so that they can know you and know your ways. And so... Uh, a lot of that foundation that he got in transformations, once again, with Bible reading, study, times where he had to just take the time to follow the rules, is quite hard 
for that sort of temperament. So yeah, set the guidelines when they're young and as they come back around and even with that rebellious tendency and that tendency to want to be out there leading the cause, God can bring that around in a positive way. So, I mean, I guess the whole journey was a miracle. And then you and Justin getting together was another miracle. And now your beautiful family. I know Justin thanks God every day for the goodness and just seeing the beautiful joy and laughter with the children is just very, very special. So God is faithful. And the other scripture that I would bring up is uh, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And God has promised us that the righteousness of God will surround our kids. And um, as I've read in prayer, and I see a big part of my role now as, as an anna at the church here, is prayer. And yes, we pray. I love being on the prayer tower. I love praying for needs. But sometimes warfare prayer is the only way through. And I, I, I would challenge every mum, you know, even if, you, if it's 15 minutes while your little ones are asleep, spend some time with God, just calling the blessing of God upon your children and asking God to just meet them at every need. And, and I now do that with my grandchildren, make my kids' businesses successful. God, protect them from wrong pathways in business. And then um, we're still praying for further, closer walks with our children towards God and we're playing for all our grandchildren that they'll come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Amen. Can you just um, pray for the families that might be watching that are going through a tough time and might really need that, you know, someone praying on their behalf and encouraging Mm. them? Mm. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that we've got so much to be grateful for when we look over past and Um, the life of Justin and the work that now you've called Justin and Chrissy into. And I pray for every person watching this uh, talk today or whether they're watching it now or on the stream, on the email. Lord, I pray that you will speak peace into hearts today. I pray that you'll speak faith into every mother and father's heart as they pray for kids who are astray kids who are rebellious, kids who don't want God in their lives. We pray that your Holy Spirit will do a deep, deep work and draw them back to you. I pray that you'll bring circumstances and people across uh, young people's lives that will turn them around and bring to their remembrance things that you've placed there earlier and things they know but they're not listening to. We just pray that you will do a deep, deep work and that your spirit will turn lives around and turn hearts to you. I just pray for that fervency, that dedication, that people will not give up. I pray, Father, that you will put hope into every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Amen. And, you know, we know that during this time, it can be a really tough season for people. Um, not being connected, but also for people that are maybe going through these things at the moment. So we want to hear from you. If any of you want prayer, please email us at prayer at presence.org.au. And we have a prayer tower that prays 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we would love to partner with you to pray and to encourage you and maybe help you if there's anything we can do. Have an awesome night and we will see you on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Lord, we just thank you for hearing about your story of trial, but also victory. We just bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We just want to wait on you and meditate that you are the victor, that you have the victory, and that we are hidden in you, seated with you in heavenly places, Lord Jesus. We bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the victor. Bless you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to see the victory I'm going to see the victory For the battle belongs to you, 
you we honor you we thank you for your presence in our homes everywhere we go Lord Jesus we thank you that you wear the victor's crown that we are seated with you in heavenly places that we belong to you that we are marked with you that we are sealed with you Lord Jesus Father help us to walk as victors in every day in our lives knowing that the trials and tribulations may come but we will endure because we have you we bless you Lord Jesus Bless you guys. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Have a great week.